Hey y'all, I'm Donnie Claray, and today we're going to be going through my very first Q&A. I realized that most of the questions I get are just DMs and Instagram, so I thought it'd be a great way to answer all these questions in a video just in case future viewers might want to know the same thing. So the first question I have, how did you decide to go into the medical laboratory field? By the end of undergrad, I developed an interest for microbiology and biochemist topics. Um, but I didn't wanna go straight into grad school because I wanted to build work experience first. Um, and I also wanted to work in a laboratory environment to gain said experience. And I narrowed down the fields to healthcare. Um, I like the idea of being on the diagnostic side of medicine. So I ended up choosing the medical laboratory field. Second question, exactly how hard is it to become a medical technologist? Um, I guess I consider myself almost halfway there, but it takes a lot of studying. <laughs> There's a lot of information that you have to know in order to work in this field. So I think this person was asking this just to get a feel for the difficulty of the program, which is really subjective and really depends on the specific training program that you attend. But just keep in mind that if it's something you really wanna do, then you'll be fine because you'll be driven and motivated to keep going. And there's tons of resources that you can choose from to help you through. <laughs> Third question, what do you do for work? Y'all getting kind of personal, but I'm employed in academia as an adjunct instructor within a biology department. So I work with students who are at risk of failing their courses. It's my job to remediate them and get them caught up in their course so they can be successful. I work with biology, chemistry, anatomy, physiology, and microbiology students. I get upwards 40 students a semester possibly. So the next question, what's the best way to approach chemistry classes or just in general, how can I do well in them? Um, I'm gonna assume that you're talking about the prereq course and not clinical chem, cause these are two different ball games. Um, the best thing you can do is just practice, practice, practice. Uh, chemistry is just one of those things that you have to keep working at it. Use any resources available to you at school. Most campuses have tutoring and teaching assistants to help you and assist you throughout the course. Also reach out to your instructor and visit them in office hours. They usually take the time to help make sure you really understand the information and understand these concepts, but here's the team. There is a great YouTuber called Organic Chemistry Tutor. He is awesome and explains literally all the concepts you'd learn in a very nice and concise way, especially when you're getting ready to prep for the ACS exam. Um, but the biggest tip I have is just do as many practice problems as you can. Make sure you know how to do these equations and that you understand which, what each part of the equation stands for. Um, because a number of chemistry problems are broken down into all these minute steps. So understanding how you get each value helps when things start to build upon each other as you go through the chemistry courses. What's the best way to study in the STEM field? Well, I feel like learning as a whole is just easier if you figure out your specific learning style. I also spend time teaching the topic to others. I found that when I have to explain something to someone else, it forces me to organize my thoughts in a way that is efficient enough for me to understand what I'm saying and what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I teach my boyfriend and my dog. <laughs> But I would like to say focus when you're in lecture, but that's been something that I've struggled throughout school with, especially when it's just strictly auditory and they're just talking because I'm easily distracted. So if you're like me and can't pay attention, your textbook is your best friend. I've adapted fully to just reading my textbooks from start to finish in whatever science-based course I'm in. Some people consider this inefficient um, as they can get everything they need from the lecture and PowerPoints, but you just have to figure out what works for you. Next question, how do you take notes? I'm just gonna say figure out the best way for you to take notes. Um, for me, it's digital. So I do outlines, I make flow charts and concept maps to follow up with. And I type out my notes because I type faster than I can write. And I also heavily shorthand when I do write because I'm very lazy. So it makes it hard when I'm trying to review those notes. But I prefer digital notes because I can type out better and longer sentences than I can when I'm writing. And I also like to save paper so I hope that answered the question, but maybe I can do a video one day to show you. I use Google Docs and I make my notes based on the learning objectives in the textbook. But like I said before, <laughs> I'd be reading my textbooks. So <laughs> uh, again, just figure out your learning style. Like, are you a visual learner? Do you learn best by hearing things? Are you a tactile learner? 
Most of us are a combination of more than one learning style. So for me, I am visual and tactile. And I do best by having diagrams and making my own visual cues. I also benefit by being able to hand yeah, I also benefit by being able to have hands-on learning as well as being able to visually see what's going on. But overall, <laughs> I'm gonna keep reiterating this because you need to figure out what works for you. Next question, how many hours a day do you study to stay on top of all your schoolwork? I probably spend an average of one to three hours a day studying possibly. Of course, some days it may be way more than that. Some days maybe 30 minutes max, so it just depends. But I personally spend every day doing something regarding school. I don't recommend this because that's just me. That's how I work. I always need to be doing something. But I'd say give yourself at least one day out of the week to break and clear your mind, especially if you're prone to crashing during semesters. Uh, next question, do you still work full time? No. <laughs> I could not manage both of my jobs and a full course load. So I currently only work as an adjunct and that's basically part time. But the benefit is that they really work with me to make sure that my education comes first since it is a college and education is their priority. My second job was for the Department of Public Health. I was a case investigator for coronavirus. So I was assigned a case load from the state's database and I'd basically interview patients who tested positive for COVID-19. So I talked to them about their exposure, their infection, so like their current signs and symptoms that they were experiencing, if they had to go to the hospital, what treatments did they receive and stuff like that. Then I gathered a list with all their contacts. So these are the people they might've infected. Just overall, I talked to them about their experience with the virus. Then I had to educate them about the virus and then CDC's guidelines for them to follow. Um, I did this job for about six months. Then it got to the point where it was just clashing with my classes this past fall. So I was like, look, I have to choose between prioritizing a short-term job versus my education now. So I ended up leaving the job in like the end of September or early October. But the benefit of working for DPH was that I gained public health experience and I got to utilize my degree and my knowledge base in microbiology. So overall, I don't regret it. It was very, very stressful to work two demanding jobs plus taking classes in a demanding program. So one had to go. So no, I do not work full time anymore. I'm just part time. Um, next qu question, I think this is the last one, but general advice for time management and tips for procrastination. So I follow the Pomodoro method. I usually do 50 minute sessions with a 10 to 15 minute break. And as far as procrastination goes, um, I don't know. I don't have tips for that. Um, deadlines make me nervous, so I'm usually doing assignments way ahead of time and submitting them ASAP, so I can't help you with procrastination. I'm very forgetful, so if I wait until the day to do something, I chances are I forgot all about it. So I usually have to submit a few days before the deadline. Um, I do have an app that you can use, and it's called Forest. I'm gonna show it to you. This is called Forest, and it's an app where you time yourself to focus on one topic for however long you want to. Um, I've been using this app since I started my program and so far, I'm gonna show y'all how much time I've spent studying since. But in 2020, I spent 23,282 minutes studying. So this was the past month, this is December. I only spent 240 minutes studying. So that goes to show that I don't necessarily use my time wisely, but um, Again, this is the overview. This is the past year of 2020. This is not sponsored, I promise you. <laughs> I just really like the app. <laughs> Another thing, if you have a big project, just take it piece by piece. Schedule out time in your planner way before the due date so you'll have time to pace yourself and not feel as rushed at the last minute. You can also do to-do lists because they can help you if you are goal-oriented like me. I get motivated as I'm completing tasks and checking things off in my planner. So maybe if you split up like large tasks into smaller bits, it might help you with procrastination. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it for this video. The questions I've answered, I've gotten them multiple times in my DMs. So hopefully this helps you if you did have any questions for me. Comment down below any questions that you may have. And if you prefer not to comment, then you can always reach me on social media. Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat are DomoX Dash. So feel free to talk to me, y'all. I really just be chilling. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to keep up with my journey through clinical laboratory school.